Are you ready to continue to start? Okay. Okay, I, I'm here. Yes, I'm ready to continue. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's continue, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> So the technical condition diagnostics of construction facilities under operating conditions is a relevant problem. The solution is connected to the development of complex monitoring systems. Within the scope of practical implementation of condition monitoring systems, failure forecasting and damage estimation become an important problem. So we have plenty of requirements that a good condition monitoring system should satisfy. First is veracity, veracity and reproducibility of monitoring results. Uh, second, uh, it is adequate decision support system uh, that is based on data analysis and machine learning techniques. And uh, the last one that the last requirement is that uh, the technical condition estimation uh, should be conducted uh, fully automatically without expert participation. Uh, so complex uh, approach in training of the uh, structural health monitoring systems also supposes building the system of pattern recognition and classification that lies in the foundation of decision making uh, regarding the hazard class of the defects in the construction facilities. Uh, such an approach uh, su supposes uh, a training mode that utilizes multivariate data analysis and machine learning algorithms. So in current work, we propose a sequential approach of training the acoustic emissional um, structural health monitoring system uh, that consists of multiple data preparation and model training stages uh, that allow to build defect evolution model. It can be utilized to forecast the hazard class of the defect inside the construction facility. So the stages of the proposed method, uh, you can see them on the slide. First, First is uh, feature extraction on short and mid-term domain. Uh, so we have uh, so the frequency. So uh, this approach uh, is you know, refers to uh, feature extraction from uh, acoustic emission time series. Um, so the frequency and the time frequency features uh, during this uh, during this method are calculated in short uh, term sliding windows uh, which are then averaged in mid-term domain by means of calculating uh, several statistical parameters of probability distribution and then uh, they are aggregated in diagnostic feature matrix uh, so there are uh, plenty of um, considerations uh, about uh, short-term and the mid-term uh, feature extraction and uh, you can see them on the slide. Uh, so the features should be selected uh, to describe local structure of the impulse. Windows should be small enough to capture the properties of a single acoustic emission, or acoustic emission impulse and uh, overlays of the windows should be large enough to, to provide maximum time and spectral resolution of acoustic emission impulse. And um, meanwhile, in the midterm domain, features should represent statistical parameters, as I said earlier, uh, and the sliding windows should be large enough to identify signal components of different hazard class appeared during uh, evolution of the defects. Uh, however, this method have a constrained application uh, because large dimension, because of large dimension 
um, of diagnostic feature matrix may lead to overfitting of classification model. So we need uh, a feature selection. We need to apply a feature selection approach uh, that um, will allow us to uh, avoid overfitting and uh, to reduce uh, the dimension to, to several uh, components that uh, <clears throat> that will uh, that would contribute to um, easily uh, <clears throat> visualization and uh, interpret interpretation uh, so in current paper we propose a greedy feature selection method uh, together with the maximum mutual information criteria criterion uh, the value of mutual information uh, determines how close the joint distribution of the feature subset uh, to the product of the marginal distribution. So the problem of feature selection with, the, uh, with this criterion is formulated as follows on the slide. Uh, so each step of the proposed uh, algorithm uh, increases the dimension of the feature, the feature, the feature set, by joining uh, feature with uh, from the rest uh, subset of step i i minus one uh, that gives uh, the maximum value of uh, mutual information coefficient, and uh, the this algorithm stops when uh, the when it reaches the uh, predefined uh, size, the size of uh, no, predefined dimension size. Uh, so next uh, <clears throat> next step is uh, to remove outliers. The problem of outlier removal occurs when forming the training set uh, for the defect evolution detection model. Outliers usually appear due to individual specialties of the controlled facility and also under the uh, influence of external factors. They can lead to classification errors of the monitoring system. In current paper, we uh, propose the outlier removal method that is based on local outlier factor algorithm. Uh, so acoustic emission events with density level factor that exceed threshold are considered as outliers uh, by this algorithm. Uh, however, this problem of calculating the threshold is very re relevant for this method since incorrect uh, threshold may lead to excessive data filtration. Uh, so we propose an iterative algorithm of selecting the optimal threshold and the single step of the algorithm and the convergence condition condition is shown on the current slide uh, and uh, the last step is uh, the step of uh, training the defect evolution detection model uh, by the means of uh, um, of the prepared training set prepared by the uh, by the stages that uh, I described earlier. So uh, <clears throat> this uh, th this problem of uh, the detection of defect evolution on the real uh, control facility is really complicated by the fact that prior information about defects or higher hazard class is generally absent. Thus, uh, classistic, class, classical uh, method of binary and multi-class classification uh, are not applicable, applicable to this problem. Uh, events that appear during monitoring and do not belong to known hazard class uh, may be considered as anomalous. 
So we can transform this problem in, into the problem of uh, anomaly detection. And in current paper, we propose a modification of anomaly detection method, uh, a one class support vector machine, uh, and uh, it al allows to find um, and the modification is about uh, how to find the optimal values of configuration uh, coefficients uh, of nu and gamma, uh, which are uh, demonstrated on the slide, uh, which uh, can uh, really uh, inf that can really influence uh, the quality of uh, defect evolution recognition process. So this solution uh, of uh, the optimization problem uh, has been conducted by genetic algorithm. Uh, so, uh, and the problem uh, is here on the slide. Uh, so the um, experimental conditions, uh, we conducted an experiment and uh, took acoustic emission data gathered during non-destructive testing on real vertical oil tank. Uh, the data acquisition was conducted by uh, non-threshold collection method and uh, the hazard class of the defect was also assessed by the result of independent inspection to, uh, to confirm the effectiveness of our method. Uh, so here are the uh, um, acoustic emission monitoring data that uh, gathered from this uh, facility. Uh, they are corresponding to uh, three uh, cl different classes of different uh, um, hazard, um, hazard def defects. Uh, so we have uh, the first is uh, evolving defect, uh, the it's dangerously evolving defect and uh, C is critically dangerous defect according to the, to the uh, classification of uh, um, independent um, inspection. Uh, so <clears throat> the first step results uh, is feature extraction. Uh, so here, we have diagnostic future values that are uh, calculated, that were calculated uh, in short and midterm windows. Uh, here we demonstrated uh, several of them. Uh, it's mean value of spectral centroid, maximum of kurtosis, uh, and maximum of energy. So uh, the first the first one is uh, the statistical parameter on the mid-term window and the second one is uh, uh, the uh, time of frequency or time frequency uh, statistic uh, on the short-term sliding window. Uh, and it follows from these features uh, that uh, defect evolution uh, that um, uh, this uh, defect that uh, this uh, parameters uh, distinguishes from uh, from from different um, from different uh, classes hazard classes and uh, they increase or decrease with the uh, with the changing of uh, of the hazard class. So uh, next uh, slide demonstrates the results uh, of feature selection uh, of proposed feature selection method, and uh, within this stage. Uh, the original set of features was mapped uh, to four-dimensional space via proposed feature selection method. Uh, it follows from uh, this figure, from figure four, 
that uh, bigger values of uh, mutual information coefficient uh, have four features and they are variation coefficient of energy, kurtosis of uh, correlation intervals, the variation of entropy and standard deviation of spectral centroid. Uh, further, the additional adjustment on uh, correlation values was conducted after the main phase of feature selection state, stage. Uh, so the three features of original feature set uh, was utilized uh, for uh, training uh, the defect evolution model uh, and the standard deviation of spectral centroid uh, was highly correlate, correlated uh, with the, uh, another one with another three parameters and uh, we decided to exclude it and therefore we only have three uh, features that uh, will be utilized uh, with the defect with the training uh, of defect evolution model um, so next uh, results is um, outlier removal verification. Uh, so <clears throat> here we see blue color marks uh, the outliers uh, found during the algorithm execution and green color marks normal events uh, corresponding to acoustic emission signals uh, that emitted from the defect. And uh, we calculated a mean value of uh, local density factors uh, both for outliers and normal events and uh, we see that uh, that <clears throat> the value of um, local density factor for outliers is two times bigger than uh, for normal acoustic emission events uh, and uh, the last step verification is uh, the training method, the results of training method. Uh, this uh, model, uh, so this is a result of uh, application of uh, one of the modified uh, one class SVM uh, support vector machine method uh, in the acoustic emission events. Uh, that corresponding to uh, corresponding to uh, satisfying technical condition of construction facility are located inside the contour, uh, while events that correspond to processes of uh, defect that forming uh, the evolution are located outside. Uh, so uh, we measured the classification error rate by uh, cross-validation using tenfold cross-validation and using accuracy metric. Um, so uh, the conclusions. Current study presented an approach of uh, training uh, structural health monitoring system of construction facilities. Proposed method consists of uh, subsequent stages, features extraction onto uh, time resolution domains, features, feature selection, uh, outline detection, and uh, training approach uh, based on uh, one of the anomaly detection method. And uh, we have approbation uh, of the proposed method on the actual construction facilities. Um, this, uh, so we conclude that this method can be utilized for building effective uh, structural monitoring system for construction, for construction facilities. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, questions? Thank you, Ladislav. It was a very interesting report. Any question, please? I have a question. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, the slide before the last, you mentioned one class SVM. Why did you choose one class SVM? Because there are also some other 
classifiers which you can use? Uh, yes, we, we tried also isolation forest, uh, but uh, for this uh, spe specific type of uh, data, the acoustic emission data and the, uh, and the environmental condition uh, that, um, that participating during the uh, data collection process, we we uh, we saw that uh, the one class SVM uh, works uh, better than uh, uh, than other uh, similar method like uh, like uh, so <clears throat> like isolation forest as I said before. Uh, also, we uh, considered local outlier factor, uh, but not for outliers, but uh, for anomaly detection, but uh, it, um, it was really not applicable to this type of data. Okay, have you tried deep learning approaches? Because in anomaly detection nowadays, uh, deep learning is the one which is, gets more. Yes, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm uh, going to try it in my further uh, research and uh, really my uh, further research will be contributed to uh, to trying the deep learning method uh, such as uh, probably um, even um, LSTM, some uh, recurrent, recurrent network uh, that, that have uh, the uh, function of uh, memory, uh, maybe LSTM or something more. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you. Any question? No? So, Thank you, Vladislav. Okay. It's okay. very interesting. And please uh, stop your demonstration, your screen. Um, okay, I will try. Okay, and uh, um, the, yeah. thank you. The next report I will present. So I'm sharing my screen. Please tell me, can you see? Yes. Okay. Well, hello, I'm Anna Antonova and I present the report analysis of the method for counting the renewable and non-renewable resources in scheduling. Scheduling is one of the key problems of organizational systems control. We consider both the restrictions in the non-renewable and renewable resources, including the lifetime of the non-renewable resources. Well, what are the non-renewable and renewable resources? The renewable resources include resources that can be reused after release, for example, staff or mechanisms. The non-renewable resources include resources that are completely consumed during process execution. For example, invested money. One of the key problems during scheduling is contradictions between the work deadlines and the renewable resources restrictions. A possible solution is attraction of the subcontracting renewable resources when the own ones is lack the subcontract cost should be minimized. The aim of the report is to analyze of the scheduling and modeling methods considering both types of the resources. On this slide you can see the scheduling problem formulation that we have considered. The goal of scheduling is to minimize the cost of uh, the attracted renewable subcontract resources. The controlled variable X are the start dates of the operations. 
time constraints are imposed on the controlled variables. Restrictions on the availability of the non-renewable resources are also considered. Well, we consider application of some scheduling theory methods. The critical path method or CPM method allows to calculate the earliest completion time of the project and to determine the critical path and identify the works that have zero time reserve. The CPM methods has limitations on the description of life cycle of the non-renewable resources. For example, supplies, consumptions, and resource lifetime. We consider application of some shadow theory methods. The closest problem is the problem of parallel system shadow optimizing with identical machines in the presence of delays in the start of the servicing requests and given servicing due dates. For the considered problem, Gima D proposed an approximate algorithm which in the first state calculates the physical schedule under the assumption that all the sources are non-renewable. At the second stage, the algorithm search for the schedule considering the renewable resources constraints by packing works in order to satisfy all resource constraints and minimize the execution time. Gencherov has proposed a heuristic method based on the modified genetic algorithm for solving the high dimensional shadowing problem. Modification of the genetic algorithm is associated with the concept of a dense gene chromosome section that encodes a sequence of the works that mostly optimal use the renewable resources. The considered three methods, CPM, Gimedi and Gancherov basically do not consider the restrictions on the non-renewable resources. And if they do, for example, in Gimedi algorithm, they do not take into account the resource lifetime. So we need of additional methods for solving the considered shadowing problem. Namely, we use a discrete event modeling in order to take into account the identified criteria. We propose multi-agent genetic optimization methods or MGO methods. Based on the integration of simulation, multi-agent and evolutionary modeling, we developed method, MGO method, intended to solve the business process scheduling problem. The proposed MGO methods allows one to search for decision to the scheduling problem using a modified genetic algorithm. The multi-agent model is designed to assess the fitness function of decisions during the operation of the genetic algorithm. The controlled parameters, work start dates, and initial parameters are fed into the model input. The parameters formed in the decision-making process are models outputs the cost of subcontracting renewable resources and the downtime of the own resources of each competence. The stopping criteria of the genetic algorithm work is the achievement of a given number of population. In order to implement the new NGO methods, products of the Bepesin family have been selected as the most meeting the requirements of the multi-agent simulation and decision support in the field of organizational systems control. Currently, the family is represented by the following products. The BBSIM MAS, Dynamic Situations Modern System, and BBSIM MSN, Technical and Economic Design System. The BBSIM MAS system is intended to development and application of the multi-agent models. The BBSIM MSN system supports development of the intelligent agents in order to manage the developed models and to decision search. The developed information technology for decision-making, modeling, and scheduling business processes has the following features. Integration of simulation, expert, multi-agent, and evolutionary approaches. Description of system models using the graphical notations. 
which is convenient for non-programming users. Ability to account for renewable and non-renewable resources, opportunity to correlate evolutionary and simulations model, and support for tracking the subcontract renewable resources with minimum cost. So now uh, on this slide, there is a simple case study to illustrate uh, the work of the methods. We developed the multi-agent simulation model of project execution. The model structure via graphical means of uh, modern system WebC mass is presented on the slide on the left upper corner with the composition of project works and manufacturing works. In the structure, you can see agents. They are used to allocate their own and subcontracted renewable resources and also their non-renewable resources to the work. The operation calendar planning is fed to the model input. The fitness function evaluation is obtained in the model output. Result of the multi-agent genetic optimization application to the problem considered shows that the best decision has been achieved in the seventh generation with the minimum value of the total subcontract cost on the project portfolio. Proposed in geo methods allows to reduce total subcontract cost by six times compared with the initial work plan and by 30 percentage compared with heuristic simulation methods. Heuristic simulation methods is simulation with some heuristics in the agents that allow to shift the work start date in accordance with the due dates to minimize the subcontract cost. So, I make a conclusion. Uh, the analysis of some mathematical approaches to solving the scheduling problem with renewable and non-renewable resources has been carried out. Conclusion has been drawn on the need to use simulation. And the method of multi-agent genetic optimization has been developed. New method has been implemented uh, via their software products of the BabySim family. And this technology has been tested in solving the problems of business processes scheduling. Well, that's all. And thank you for attention. Any question, please? If there are no questions, well, that we are going to the next report. Yes? Or we should wait? Uh, yes, we can start. Okay. And the next report is presented by Artem Lissin, Igor Dermin. Please, you're welcome to share a screen. Mm, good afternoon, all. I hope you hear me and see my screen. Yes, it's all right. Uh, the topic of my talk is numerical simulation of focused ultrasonic waves in salt biological tissues with subsequent generation of shear waves. In this work, a numerical simulation of the shear wave elasticity imaging method is carried out, the diagram of which is shown on the slide. The radiation source is a standard medical sensor with a linear arrangement of emitters. The emitters using a phase delay, using phase delay, send a focused impulse to a point. Under the action of this impulse, generates acoustic radiation force. And, uh, and after that, shear wave begin to propagate from a focal point. The wave pushes particles that are displaced using a standard imaging pulses. This slide shown the model equations for the evolution of acoustic waves. The generalized Westerwelt equation was used because uh, it's this equation demonstrated better performance. The equation is solved using a uh, MATLAB using the pseudo-spectral cost-space method 
where spot cell gradients are calculated using a fast Fourier transform scheme. And the temporal gradients are calculated using a corrected Caspase difference scheme. This slide uh, also shows the boundary conclusions, uh, boundary conditions, sorry. Program interface based on MATLAB GUI. Internal conditions are set here, such as density of the medium, the speed of sound in it, and number of emitters. The picture also shows the first stage of modem, focusing the reference pulse. The second stage of modeling is uh, visible here, shear wave propagation works as a separate process based on the results of the first stage. In case of an unfocused emitter, the focusing field remains empty, as you can see. Numerical simulation results are compared with experiment. Experiment was carried out on a Verasonic Sviadin acoustic system and calibrated KISS model 049 Phantom. The phantom contains uh, inclusions that defer the density. The parameters of the numerical simulation were selected uh, in accordance with the phantom. The wave velocity was calculated based on, a, on the path uh, traveled by the wave front on a known time. Equation you can see here. Diagrams show the results of numerical simulation and experiment for different areas of the calibrated phantom. The dependence of the shear wave velocity on the density of the medium is the same, but the speed values for numerical simulation and experiment are different. It uh, could be due to the fact of there are many additional factors in experiment like a temperature, phantom wear over time, medicine equation. In conclusion, the problem of modeling the focusing of the ultrasonic beam by the means of the wave is solved numerically. The results of number and physical modeling are compared. The implementation of the calculation complex with a graphics interface is presented. Thank you for your attention. Wait for a question. Okay, any question? Please feel free. Well, uh, the question from me. Have you uh, considered any tools or information systems that intended for numerical simulation? And have you compared with them your information system? What are your advantages? Uh, no, I don't compare because uh, the most popular systems uh, don't use uh, this method, shear wave plasticity imaging, because it's new method, it's non standard method. And. Uh, okay, but it's not your method, yes? It's not my method. Okay. You just uh, implement and uh, evaluate this method. So, yes. Yes, it's great. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any question? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, please stop your sharing. Yes, and uh, we are going to the last report in this section uh, performed by Arseny Fyodorov, Anna Maslow. Masolova, Anna Karalkova, and Dmitry Kulabov, please. Be free to share a screen and report. Uh, okay. Good afternoon. You can hear me? Yes, we can see your presentation and hear you. Mm, it's great. Okay, I will start. Uh, good afternoon again. Dear organizers and uh, attendees of the uh, seventh International Young Scientists Conference, uh, I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak today. 
uh, the subject of my report it's application of numerical analytical approach in the process of uh, modeling differential equation in the Julia language. Uh, let me in brief introduce myself. My name is Arseny Fedorov. Uh, I'm student of second year master graduate program. Uh, I'm studying to, uh, in the direction applied mathematics and informatics uh, at the departments of applied informatics and probability theory based on People's Friendship University of Russia. Uh, Bill uh, highlighted my mail. Uh, you can write me a question uh, to this. Uh, aims uh, of our research is uh, to analyze uh, the possibility uh, of applying the analytical numerical approach in high performance environment uh, designed for scientific computing is a Julia programming language. Uh, the uh, auxiliary package uh, such as differential equation uh, dot drill and modeling toolkit dot drill are used uh, in the work when we work in with ordinary and stochastic differential equations. Uh, the simplest predator prey model, uh, also known as a Lotka Valtera model, was taken as a problem under consideration. Uh, this model is consideration in ordinary in stochastic forms. Uh, quick uh, summary of the Julia. Mm, Julia is a high performance programming language built for mathematical computing. Uh, Stefan Karpinski, Jeff Bizanson, and uh, Vero Schach, uh, and also Alan Edelman. Uh, are very involved in the developments of this language in uh, 2009 year. Their goal is to create a language that can handle with uh, a lot of computation and while de delivering high performance. Uh, and in February uh, 2020 year, the first open version of Julia language was already published. Uh, its language is written um, in C, C++ and Sim. Uh, Julia syntax is similar to that of other mathematical programming language, such as MATLAB and uh, Octave. Uh, this language uh, is constantly evolving and has many plugin packages. Uh, uh, on the screen, uh, show a list of advantages of Julia. It's dynamic, it's uh, just-in-time compilation, it's have multi-method support, uh, also have a built-in package manager, it's high performance, designed for parallel and distributed computing, support for Unicode, including UTF-8, and compatibility with other languages. Uh, okay. uh, mm, I, mm, I, think uh, you may know uh, why differential equation is used but i say a um, couple of sentences about it um, usually differential equation describes some natural phenomena uh, when updating a solution to such an equation or system on equation uh, we obtain a, almost a complete describing of some characteristics of the system or model. Uh, for clarity, the slides show typical equation, the equation of motion, uh, and equation of heat conduction. Uh, as a problem under consideration in our work, we take, uh, we took a simplest model of the product of prey type, uh, its very first model predatory is considered to be model obtained independently from each other by uh, Lotka and Volterra. Lotka in his work describes some hypothetical chemical reaction. Uh, this reaction uh, show on the current slide where X are uh, intimated substance uh, and K sub 1, K sub 2, K sub 
uh, three its coefficient uh, the rates of chemical reaction and A is initial reagent and B is the reaction product. And finally, he got a system of differential equation next time. Uh, the system completely can, uh, match uh, with system of differential equation which obtained by Volterra, who considered the mechanism of growth uh, in the number of po two population with a plot frame interaction. Uh, this slide shows the following system and uh, its parameters. Uh, in the slide uh, show stochastic model, uh, which described and described the uh, system of equation. Uh, it corresponds to the previous system. Uh, however, it have a function responsible for stochastic or noise, uh, which added the right slide, or is the right uh, part of slide. Uh, in the slide differential equation library presented, uh, its library allows uh, our work with a differential equation in the classical program type. Uh, it's used uh, allow numerically solving differential equation in Julia. It support um, next uh, equation, next type of equation, discrete, discrete ordinary, stochastic, uh, partial differential equation, and other. Uh, solving uh, all the system with differential equation. Uh, like this. Uh, let's uh, consider process. Uh, first, we use each other package. Uh, we can be separated its work into uh, three steps, identification of the problem, solving the problem, and analyzing the results which can be obtained. Uh, identification of the problem, it's uh, look like uh, probe equal to other problem function in which we uh, put function lotka which can be defined earlier. It uh, describe our, our model. Uh, the next step is solve the problem. We solve it with help solve function which in put our problem and uh, we uh, put uh, and choose choose uh, algorithm with help it uh, will solving and additional parameters. On the slide uh, presented graph of population dynamics in ordinary form, which um, can be obtained with help uh, differential equation .gl library and uh, graphs uh, library. Oh, plots, plots, sorry. Uh, solving SD system looks um, the same, but we defined function sigma lotka, which, uh, which are necessary for, for which uh, corresponded for uh, stochastic in, uh, our, in our stochastic <laughs> equation system. And we define is the problem for solving and next uh, steps uh, looks like same. Yeah, there. Graph uh, of uh, population dynamics and stochastic form presented in the slide. Uh, next uh, slide uh, I described modeling toolkit library. You know, it's library. Uh, is a uh, modeling language for high performance, symbolic numeric computation in scientific computing and scientific machine learning. Uh, it uh, can generate different functions as uh, Jacobians and Hessians 
in addition to the ability to automat automatically specify and uh, parallelize the computation uh, since uh, this package is created for symbolic computations uh, the first step um, can maybe is defining say, symbol symbolic variables uh, it can be um, done with help the variables macro it shows this and uh, after identify, identify, identifying uh, symbolic variables uh, we can create a symbolic expression it looks like x equals 7 multiplied t plus t power powered 4 in julia it's called operation it's standard procedure uh, and uh, we um, uh, can need it to uh, get uh, derivatives in julia it's uh, 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 Julia will do it, and uh, derivatives are used with operation, same as symbolic expression. And to uh, calculate the derivative, uh, we used macro derivatives. It's used, uh, it's show this and uh, d from x uh, allow get derivative form and. Uh, function expand derivatives uh, allow we uh, obtain uh, already calculated derivatives derivative. and uh, also Julia and uh, modeling toolkit uh, library allow simplify uh, symbolic expression it's uh, also presented this it's very useful uh, solving the system with modeling toolkit looks like this uh, in this part we define parameters uh, they are uh, presented uh, as a show uh, support of unicode symbols uh, next step it's uh, define our e e e e equation system with symbolic form next step it's uh, transform it's uh, on the system with function same name and uh, next steps we define initial condition parameters uh, span or integration range for our solver and uh, Finally, we define all the problem. We scan, mm, we scan, we get obtained. We can get solve so solution for our problem. And uh, graph population dynamics in ordinary form show and writes uh, part of slide. Uh, so in the system looks same, but we. Uh, define noise x, uh, noise e x uh, system uh, corresponding for noise and d, which uh, used as the system for format in needed type uh, of data. Uh, and we solve uh, this problem with probably good for algorithms uh, and get graph population dynamics in stochastic form okay uh, resulting uh, well, resulting phase portraits for this uh, also uh, show this on this slide uh, it uh, looks same because uh, mm, our solution not not differ have, have not differ which is normal <laughs> uh, the um, coincidence of the solution uh, obtained in different phases confirmed uh, 
the resulting phase potters for SDAs uh, looks uh, different and it's also normal because it has stochastic in behavior. And finally, results. Thus, uh, a comparative analysis of work with two Julia uh, auxiliary libraries for solving differential equation was carried out. Uh, and I think numerical uh, approach uh, and now now good, but uh, symbolic approach is very comfortable for use. Uh, on the slide, uh, show uh, the sources which uh, are used for this work. I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. Maybe question. Thank you, Arseni. It was very interesting. And I see the question in the chat uh, that about a future, what is about a future work? Okay. Uh, I think uh, we uh, plan uh, uh, work with Catalyst library and we want to uh, prepare analysis uh, of compare Catalyst and uh, modeling toolkit for um, for our future work. Okay, thank you. Any question, please? I have a question. Okay. Uh, your work. Uh, what what contribution does it give? It? Because it feels like uh, you are just implementing. You're just using the libraries which are there. Can you spot maybe five or, or maybe two or three? <laughs> Uh, contributing contributions to the community. Uh, hmm, I need <laughs> some something about it. Uh, hmm. uh, maybe you can um, write to my mail. Mm, and we discuss about it, uh, maybe in Russian, <laughs> if you can. I don't understand Russian. It's okay. Oh, okay. Mm. Thank you. I will write. Okay. Okay. This is a question of a future conversation, yes? Okay. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Arseni. And uh, we are finished our section. So yeah. I give a link to Atom. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Thank you for facilitating this part of our conference. So uh, section three uh, will start in 10 minutes. So now let's have a 10 minute break. And then uh, I give uh, authority to Mufi and uh, G, you will be instead of SWAT, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll have uh, two uh, session shares on session three. Uh, see you in 10 minutes. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Anna, again for facilitating this session. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye.
Okay, everyone. So it's uh, two fifteen Moscow time, and we're ready to start with uh, our third session. So uh, Mufi G, uh, it's your time. Uh, you're responsible for this part of our event, and uh, Mufi, you start with your report. So you're welcome. Okay, so you can start. Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Mufi and uh, I will be the session chair also with G. And today we will start with my presentation actually. So let me share my screen. All right, everybody can see my screen or not? Oh, wait a minute. I think I will stop a little bit. So share. So everybody can see the presentation, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So, first thing first, so uh, I introduce myself. My name is Mofak Imam. You can call me Mufi. Today I'm going to uh, explain my research. It's a preliminary result on how to enhance online education during what COVID pandemic. All right, so uh, just a very second, let me start. Okay, so uh, as, you, as you know, after because of, uh, well, COVID and it's, uh, uh, pandemic, all online education has become uh, transformed into online format. Actually, not only online, so, so many businesses. And uh, us as uh, students and TA or researcher, we need to focus or give more attention about how to enhance online education. And this is what make me, well, search on this topic since I really love to teach. And right now I'm starting at TA position on, uh, on Annapolis University. So the, the first thing we need to tackle is our problem. First thing is how can we enhance our online education? So we start asking ourselves a question, questions the following in order to answer them and give uh, good results. So how can we improve our lectures? How can we grab the listeners' attention and moreover keep them hooked, not just like start uh, spacing around or space out? How can we engage with students if we talk to, through Zoom or if we talk through YouTube, for example? What is the best tools that we can use? Is it free or is it uh, not free? Should we use long videos or short videos? Can, should we stream our lectures or upload them? All these questions must be answered in order to deliver what? Our research goal, in order to meet our research goal. And the research goal is the following. How can we achieve the best methods and techniques to deliver the best online education experience? But for whom exactly? We need to De deliver this for both students and teachers for students to learn more and love the new way of teaching and for teachers to also to learn a new technique and how to teach through online and it's a bit challenging this day, especially for mathematical topics right so where can you write and what what can you do these all of these questions and clearly it's a new thing since this is everybody is, uh, is forced to teach online so how can we solve such problem? How can we ask, answer these uh, questions? The first thing first, we, after literature review, after reading uh, papers, after uh, creating uh, surveys and some, some things, some questions were not good enough, we created an online survey and we, this was distributed to over 150 student, 115 students who study computer science. They are actually from, uh, in a Polish university, and they were taking online classes through Zoom and YouTube. So the data that we collected was based on what? Based on the experience of the students who were uh, taking these courses. Uh, how come? So for example, when they are talking, taking, uh, for, the, for example, OAS or empirical methods, uh, during the class or after the lesson, after lecture, we ask them a bunch of questions based on our new methods or techniques that either are new or old, uh, how was their experience with it? And speaking of uh, such techniques, the method, methods and, and techniques we used is uh, the following. Some are old and some are new. For example, using digital pen, uh, digital pen when, when uh, explaining uh, on a slide. 
you see like drawing or underlining, underlining this kind of stuff. Changing colors while drawing, like uh, to, to grab attention for, uh, for people. Actually, I can use it like now, like changing the colors uh, will be helpful sometimes. Uh, also, uh, zo doing some zoom effect. Doing some zoom effect will also help when, when, uh, uh, when you zoom to a certain image or a certain word or a certain topic. Uh, another things we added, like added a documentary videos, adding animation videos to explain, like for example, how operating system works, how threads uh, works or processors. And we took advantage of the new technology produced by uh, Google and it's called YouTube chapters, where uh, I, I guess like everybody at least right now uh, saw them, where you can divide the long videos into smaller sections and name every section. And this will be a lot helpful to make the videos more searchable. Uh, so regarding of these techniques, we have, oh, we have 17 questions and they're divided into two types. Multi-choice questions where we want to collect data about the experiment we made and to see if certain techniques is well received or not. Single choice, we want to see if a single technique was the winner among others. And to be more specific, we focused on the multi-choice question on how can we present the material style? How can we, how can we make teaching a style? Uh, what is the teaching style, preferred teaching style? Uh, what will be the video drop reason? Uh, should we focus on equality? What will be the perfect duration? What tools to use and, and how can we enhance an experience? How, what colors also to use? This, all of these questions and all of these focus. By the end, we have the following questions regarding the multi-choice. In, in a quick notice, we can, I can explain them like, we ask them, do you prefer to see the lesson in, using digital pen or slides or be a person talking like a vlog, for example, like what I'm doing right now? Um, so what will make you stop the watching the video? Is it the low sound quality? Is it the low video quality? Is it it's very, very long or short? Do you prefer to watch it also? We focus on the duration of videos because one of the lectures was like, a lot, a lot of lectures based on video based, right? So what will be the perfect duration? Also, we asked about our techniques like zooming, changing color and adding documentary. Uh, also, we asked them to, to choose between the styles they, they want, uh, the teacher's style. Is it, do you like energetic and active? Interacting, funny man, serious man, angry man, this kind of stuff. And uh, we ask them about the format of the video. Do you like to, to have a, an outline, a summary, or just uh, uh, adding quizzes in the middle? These also kind of questions. The, about single choice, we focus on the method to grab attention how students like to take notes, the, the preferred speed, uh, the preferred speed of the video they watch, they are watching, and uh, what kind of questions uh, format uh, they want to to do in, during the lecture, asking immediately or asking on the last on the end of the lecture, and the following questions were arised. So, it's for example, what duration of online class will affect you negatively? Is it very very short? It's very long. This kind of stuff. Uh, do you like the face-to-face -face experience uh, or online learning? Uh, do, would you like to take notes on pen or in, on computer? What is your preferred speed? Is it 1x or is it 2x? Uh, also, we asked about, it was like, do we need to show the instructor faces face during the video? You know, when you watch a video who explain on, on a slide or a share screen, do, do you want to see his face? And actually, uh, there was a deep debate here, but seeing the face sometimes loses your attention and uh, keep it off will be better, but students uh, uh, picked that they prefer to see the faces. Okay, so regarding the, for example, the questions during the class, uh, it will be preferred like to ask immediately or not, who would be like to ask the answer, is it the teacher or the students? So, um, well, every every survey uh, at le uh, at, the, at last they must it must have a result, and we have like an, an cool result to show, and it were divided into two categories. The first category was teaching style and presenting. How uh, and 
it's explain the way of teacher interact and what perfect tools to use and video enhancement on how to enhance our videos and the following was noted student will prefer digital pen and drawing on the screen not just reading the slides uh, vlog teaching vlog style is preferred and well received to students changing colors during drawing is also well received adding documentary video animation video this also well received using youtube chapters was really received and people and students liked it a lot and they prefer to have an outline and a summary of a video so outline at the beginning and summary at the end uh, plus students like the engaging instructor who always asking them asking them and i noticed like some instructor who forcing them to for example open their camera and uh, if you teaching zoom and actually i'm one of them who I like i like to see people when i am talking to them uh, they love uh, to enter the energizing instructor like loud voice obvious personality not just like uh, not saying a lot of things uh, they would love to like to see instructor face and ask their questions immediately, not at the end of the lecture. And whatever any student asks, this is affect positively to others. Now, <laughs> regarding the video enhancement, um, sound quality is the most important, even better, even more than video quality. And this is one of the things that I found really interesting. Um, keeping video between 10 to 15 minutes is preferred. But more than 15 minutes will affect negatively on, on most of the students. They still, even if they are in online education format, they still need to take notes on paper. Uh, when watching videos, uh, our students or people in general, they like to watch uh, in high speed, 2x or 1x speed, and they prefer uploaded over streamed. In conclusion, uh, these, these key points is uh, useful for uh, students to, uh, and most likely for teachers, for TA, even if you are a TA or a professor, or even you, like, you want to start a new crash, uh, crash course on YouTube or Udemy or Skillshare, for example, this kind of stuff will help you because this all is an online format. And uh, also we, discovered that students will always welcome new technology preferred to be asked and being engaged in the lecture and any grabbing attention technique is really well received the people they love to be always uh, included and in, and uh, grab their attention plus uh, when you create a, when you create any video try to just leave some time to enhance the sounds and the quality. Moreover, the sound, just use a mic, and when you do edit, just try to, um, using the video editor uh, program, just increase the volume a little bit, it will be helpful. I would like to give an acknowledgement and big thanks to Professor Suchi, uh, Shakista, Artem, and Nikita, uh, plus Dia, Hussam, and Monsef. They really helped us uh, a lot during uh, collecting data and uh, distributing questions. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. And that's it. Any question, I will be happy, happy to ask, to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mufi, for the presentation. Any questions? Welcome. I guess it was clear for everyone. Any questions? I think no. So we can move on to the next present presenter. Who All right. Is Ilya and Sergey? Is Ilya and Sergey here? Oh. We can. Take uh, good day, uh, colleagues. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yeah. Uh, thanks. So I try to share my screen. Uh, so can you sh uh, see my presentation? Yes. Now I can see. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, so uh, good day everyone, uh, thanks, so my name is Leo Vrankov and with collaboration of my uh, research manager Sergei Sergejashvili, I would like to share uh, with you our result of experiments that we named as usage of BRT algorithm and cognitive services to research collaboration platforms. The key idea of the whole area is ability to predict the behavior of the system not based uh, on experience and data obtained in previous stages of the work. Improvement of such approaches in the future can have a serious impact of the process of improvement and evolution with transition to systems that are currently impossible to imagine. 
This transition remains impossible until humanity has learned to work effectively in the current collaboration platform. This work considers an algorithm for processing the obtained data and its execution using existing cognitive services for the analysis of text. In the future, we are with uh, our research manager would like to extend this work uh, and using with visual information. Uh, the research process is reduced uh, to the systematization of data obtained using various research methods, observation, experiment, and others. In this work, we try to apply a similar algorithm to specific system which in the study are called collaboration platforms. Such system may include information services which basically contain the idea of group of users working on the several objects in file system. The simplest example of such implementation we can, uh, it can be for example ordinary dialogue only it accuses by means of messaging of electronic devices and it's possible to predict the behavior of the participants in this dialogue using or analysis of previously received messages. In this work, we try to emulate an enterprise system, for example, company or client using modern information resources. Mm, Office 365 provide uh, us work with email as the most common way of corresponds, uh, corresponds of companies and provides the ability to use the chat system. Skype for business teams, uh, the authors uh, deliberately turned off the use of media files to simply the work. Uh, emulation of the operation of an industrial devices, it's a component IOT for major and document management system based on the SharePoint online package and SAP models with uh, Azure blockchain component. Uh, these components of the system emulated problems worked with documents, real users and process for maintaining contracts based on the result obtained. Time series analysis were applied using CRIC CPDM model methodology. Uh, the effectiveness of using this approach is found as a model of the difference in the value and estimate uh, for forecasting stage uh, with the value of each state of the iteration. We use CRICP to implement a model for collecting, analyzing information that is generated by users in collaboration platforms. Now, uh, shortly, I would like to describe BRT algorithm. Uh, consider of Bison approach to evaluating uh, non-parametric functions using regression trees. The algorithm allows us to generalize the regression trees that were located above a time series for iteration using CRICPDM method. BRT is a combination of CNRT of algorithm and the standard, and the standard uh, autoregressive integrative moving average ARIMA models in their components um, uh, and S I A S T R models and linear models of homogeneous models. Uh, Instagram messages of 365 in our experiment uh, that builds several adaptive regression splines based on time series in a single iteration of processing complex. BRT has two main differences from the setter and SRT models. First of all, its error estimates for BRT models can differ from each other both for each node and for each iteration of the cycle. And the second one, BRT is uh, characterized uh, by a gap between the models of after regression. To convert uh, the model according to the time series, we use the conversation, uh, conversion method, uh, method uh, where the result uh, validate on a T step corresponds the sum of the previous validate T minus one and the delayed value T minus P step adjusted for sentiment coefficient beta, which in turn is it's a cumulative estimate for each node of the system over time t obtained using Azure data text functions. Release of the rules for diving can put data in two segments. Most algorithms use recursive uh, separation for data on which training take place. BRT uses the iterative construction for this. Also now example, we use a uh, sentiment beta coefficient on each step of the calculation, which is uh, Sorry, uh, which is uh, uh, 
the range of values between zero and one and cumulative. The coefficient is calculated for each individual influence the result on each node. Zero in the correspondence of an absolute negative comment in the system. Message in correspondence with a pronounced uh, indication of disconnect, for example. One is a positive value. During the simulation, we have never got one or zero. And uh, about the cognitive uh, component uh, and uh, uh, taking uh, analyze the text messages, we describe methods of receiving better. In this study, we use the existing cognitive service functionality to calculate this correction and each new iteration, uh, considering the results of previous values for iteration and in the system. This approach uh, is since uh, the calculation of such uh, uh, coefficient is a separate area and there is a several approach to solving this problem. In our experiment, we use the service according to the black box principle. We don't know the internal structure and implementation of the server, but we introduce a correction value in the equation. Options, uh, how we implement this, you can find in the slide. Uh, now let's talk about empirical results. Uh, for our model, uh, we carried out with simulated work for 30 days uh, with, particip with participation of real users who talked in the mail, worked with internal messengers, uh, used the work system on SharePoint, uh, reacted to system uh, simulating indus industrial capacities and so on. And uh, taking into account randomly generated events, breakdown, failures, external contact by mail and more. According to idea of experiment for each iteration of node, the target variable uh, will be a log return value for the time period after the incident. The closer value is the last column to zero. The more accurate the forecast gives the system above uh, about the result of future interactions. Not some interesting features in the experimental results. Just uh, the best value for interval nodes showed a study of the chat system. This uh, node is not critical for maintaining the efficiency of the enterprise model as email can be duplicated. This fact and the fact that uh, in the calculation, we use a cognitive analysis of chat text messages uh, that can be deeply analyzed for the system uh, it, at each iteration can explain the leadership uh, in using this approach for text messaging. Second one, uh, the relatively high, the second place of a SharePoint DMS in due to the formalization of a process where in the workflow for processing documents, it's not possible to introduce a serious dis turbans, for example, comments. At the same time, the usefulness of this cognitive service this in such formalized system can be questioned. Uh, the third one, the relative success of model in SAP models uh, is also explained the high formalization and the st standardization of the processes. The result obtains the value uh, is worse than that on previous paragraphs. May indicate the imperfection of the method when working with external disturbance and the difficulty of predicting emergency situation in the system. The simulation result for the conveyor may indicate indicates the interaction of the applied approach for a participle node. Uh, so thanks uh, for my uh, research manager, Sergei Sergeyevsky, and if you have any questions, please welcome. Any questions from the audience? Okay, I guess it's going to be a question from me, uh, Ilya. Your, your research, as you said, uh, did you compare it with some other related or existing approaches or it's something new that's novel? Uh, uh, not exactly. It's uh, several researches. Uh, we have just uh, published uh, in this journal the same uh, situation and we're also based on the research from other uh, colleagues from European universities, they studying more the uh, collaboration in studying system, in uh, professional system. So yes, we also worked with the previous results. So it's like an extension of work which is already there. 
uh, it's extensions, but we uh, we upgrade uh, this algorithm BRT that I'm using, adding this uh, cognitive service component, and we also it's our great approach, I suppose. We also get uh, I suppose the real information from the production systems. Uh, it was uh, it was really helpful to understand the uh, the real work process in such uh, companies. Okay, thank you for your contribution. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, okay, I think we can move on. I don't know if the next presenter is ready because they're supposed to take over uh, in five minutes. The next presenter is here or is still waiting? Okay, thank you. So we can start presenting. Okay, thank you. I can see myself. That's it. Dear colleagues. Okay, you're not sharing the screen. Uh, we cannot see anything. We can only see a picture. Mm. Dear colleagues. Yes, we can hear you, but we cannot see your screen if you're sharing something. Are you see right now? No, oh, I don't oh, see. Maybe some other people they can see. Uh, right uh, now, no? No. Uh, one, one second. Uh, okay, you have time. Mm -hmm. Now we can see. Uh, right now? Yes. It's can. okay? Yes, now we can see. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Dear colleagues, I would like to make my report on the topic bin pass theta based on microplane resonators. I apologize uh, in advance for my English. I hope it won't be so big. Telecommunication systems are actively developing, which has led to stricter uh, requirements for electromagnetic environments. This is radio interference from operating uh, systems with close operating frequencies. In order to reduce the influence of interference, it is uh, necessary to use frequency uh, featuring of this interference. Therefore, one of the important areas of microwave technology in the research. Development and uh, production of frequency selective device models. Frequency uh, selective devices are an integral part of any communication systems. At the same time, with the increasing uh, uh, complexity of communications systems. The requirements for the electric, electrical and uh, weight and size parameters of frequency select, uh, selection uh, devices are constantly becoming more stringent. In this work, a been pass theta based on microstrip Resonators is designed and in investigated. Such resonators are made on a dielectric substrate on made, make it uh, possible to obtain small dimensions and cost of the filter. Uh, today in the literature and uh, textbooks, you can find bent pass filters whose designs are known to everyone a filter 
on coupled lines, a appearing filter, uh, and others. Consider a couple couple of uh, standard one gigahertz bandpass filter design assembled on a Rogers substrate. In figure in figure one, shows the topology of the bandpass filter obtained on the coupled transmission lines. The filter characteristics are shown uh, in figure two. In figure three, show the topology of a hairpin bandpass filter. The filter characteristics are shown in figure four. However, they design uh, at low frequency can have an impressive area which can adversely affect their use. Therefore, they were considered the design of a filter assembled on a Rogers subs substrate consisting of microstrip resonators located on one side of the substrate on supply segments on the other side. The filter has a central operating with width on one gigahertz. Figure five shows a variant of um, microstrip resonators. By installing two such resonators on one side of the substrate and adjusting the position of uh, the supply segments and the dimensions of the resonators, it was possible to tune the filter to the design, desired uh, center frequency. In figure six shows uh, the resu resulting uh, filter based on the proposed resonators. Uh, the developed design has small dimensions and demonstrated good frequency selective properties. The filter, character the filter characteristics are shown in figure seven. According to the uh, data in table one, we see that at the same state center frequency, the proposed filter is much smaller in size. Uh, this suggests that for mobile wearable devices, we can get a compact uh, and lightweight filter. The bandwidth will be determined by the system in which it will be used. Conclusion. In this work, the authors proposed in the design of a band pass filter based on micro strip resonators. The proposed filter operates at a center frequency of one gigahertz and has a relative bandwidth of 16.8%. The well-known Rogers material uh, acts as a substrate. Uh, the filter area <coughs> is 250 square millimeters. Such a filter has a smaller size in comparison uh, with the typical bandpass filter of schism proposed in the textbooks. Thanks for attention. If there is some question, please uh, write on my mail. I will surely uh, reply to you. Thanks for attention. Okay, anyone with a question before? We close. Mm, there is a question in the chat, and I think thank you. Uh, 
My pleasure. Uh, okay, I, there's kind of like going to be one uh, comment or kind of like a question that I would have. Uh, you said you compared with the ones from textbooks, uh, the methods you didn't mention them. What are your future plans, future works, how to extend the work that you've just presented? In future, we combine it to directions uh, by printing technology and the uh, uh, and the radio technical technology, um, we can select the them and uh, we can get uh, a microplane, this microplane by using uh, printing uh, methods. Okay. Uh, we have 10 minutes more. And the next presentation is going to be by Swati, but it's not going to be there. Uh, Marina and Anatoly, uh, if they are here, they can present early if they are ready. Maria, you are here? Or oh. Anatoly? Looks like uh, she's here, but let's wait a bit. Ah, okay. We can have a break maybe for five minutes and then we can continue. Maria, sound is not good. Hello. 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 Hello, hello, Maria. I want to tell you about um, knowledge management in management of social and economic development of municipalities highlights. And sorry. Um, the tutorial relative of the Russian, uh, Russian Federation is such the management of social and economic development of regions and the individual municipalities cannot really own solution that are considered standard of the world practice. The unique aspects uh, of development of a municipality terminate of is an essential role uh, of regional and municipal authorities and addressing the problems of social and economic development of territories. Uh, however, the problem is uh, accepted uh, by the fact that after the maker transformation that the country has experienced, 
state and municipal authorities were not uh, fully prepared to build uh, an effective Persian municipality relationship, which is expected uh, by various uh, regional and legal uh, currency financing and the lack of uh, conference system of information and analytical support uh, that would make it possible to fabricate development of territory. Um, on the slide, uh, show offers a general view uh, of the algorithm of strategic, strategic management. Um, analysis of fundamental documents uh, that deal with strategic social and economic development show, uh, shows uh, that the process of uh, social and economic uh, development management can be represented as a model on this slide. Um, that uh, demonstrates uh, the deceased role of state administration in planning. Um, ideally, uh, municipal strategic management should be based on strategic plans of local government uh, that take into account the public opinion and opinion of the business country. Uh, however, in practice, uh, the situation is different. A local affair tried to implement the strategy based on the exciting administrative methods. As a result, uh, all activities are reduced to an action plan that excites for executive entries only, including the local community business. Um, and the result, uh, the following key problems of municipal, municipal level strategy can be significant of this slide. Uh, as, a, as a result, the social and economic development management model uh, topped down in uh, transformed into a bottom up model uh, on this slide. Uh, that um, will make it possible to take uh, into account the unique aspects of individual territories when making long-term development plans in uh, compliance with uh, national strategic goals. Analysis of the munis municipal social and economic development process shows uh, that the management model consists of multiple levels at the same time, uh, note uh, that semantic model represents uh, the best solution for modeling of social and economic development, as uh, they offer a visual representation that is closed of the natural, natural language. Uh, based uh, on the semantic network show uh, generally in on uh, this slide, uh, it should be noted uh, that the social and economic development strategy of municipality depends on its type. Its current levels of uh, social and economic development uh, and on the number of rural supplements included in municipality. Uh, the set of indicators for assessment uh, of municipal social and economic development are independent. Uh, which should be taken into account when developing uh, the model of municipal social and economic development. At the same time, uh, the semantic network doesn't make it possible to determine uh, the state of connection between indicators, uh, which means uh, that the type of relations can be described using the tools of cognitive modeling. A uh, standard co cognitive model uh, on this slide uh, was built based on a set of indicators used to assess the social and economic development, which model can serve as a basis for modeling of social and economic development in specific territory. Uh, in turn, analysis of various types of cognitive maps uh, show that their tool that is quite adaptive um, on this slide. However, based on this uh, criteria, silos uh, for the cognitive maps and for the production cognitive maps uh, as a better choice. Uh, the former are preferred choice for the purpose of modeling science 
their letters are rarely used for design and analysis of semi-structured system. And uh, result, uh, a social and economic development of a territory is a complex and uh, continuous process of planning and uh, forecasting that enjoined authorities of all levels. However, this puts um, the formizing approach to planning at the federal level, municipalities face a number of problems in the process of this work. Uh, the greatest challenge uh, in the process of decision making in social and economic development is the unavailability of com complete information about the territory to the individual decision maker. Uh, that is due to the fact uh, that social and economic development is some structured subject area, which fact must be taken into account in the process of planning in and uh, fair case. To neutralize uh, the negative impact of problems uh, in the terrain during the study, proposed to use semantic and cognitive tools in practical management of municipal social and economic development, which will um, until to improve the quality and the level of uh, justification of manager decisions made of, of offers. Uh, and uh, this paper is designed as part of state assessment of the Minister of Science and Higher Education. Thank you for attention. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone questions? Suggestions? Okay, so thank you, Maria. Thank you, G. Looks like uh, we have uh, we come to the end of this session. Excuse and, uh, me, I have some question. Oh, sure. Yes, yes. What is the difference of two seal of cognitive maps? Uh, what present on uh, the uh, at last slide? Marie, you still here? She disappeared. Marie, yeah, she disappeared. Yeah, we, we will address this question to her uh, personally, okay. and uh, Constantine, uh, we will provide you, you with uh, her reply. Yeah, we'll use email for this communication. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, by the way. and. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, we have to uh, we have some break before the next session and the presentation of uh, report uh, sorry of blockchain solutions for autonomous vehicles ecosystem will be postponed till tomorrow. So now we have about half an hour before we start our last session for today, session four. Uh, so uh, let's have a break and see you in uh, 27 minutes at 3.30. Thank you.
Okay, everyone, welcome back. So it is 3.30 Moscow time and we're ready to start our last session for today, session four. And I see Zamira is here already, who will be the session chair. Zamira, it's your time. Uh, you're responsible for this part. You're welcome. And uh, also all authors of this session, welcome as well. <laughs> so let's start, guys. Uh, thank you, Artem. So let's start today's uh, the last session. So, uh, and the first uh, presenter, uh, according to our schedule, is a presenter from Bauman Moscow State Technical University. Please, it's your time. It's your time to present your work. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, dear colleagues, do you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kanye Panton and I'm from Bowen Moscow Techni uh, State Technical University. Today I would like to present our investigation, evaluation issues of query result ranking for semantic search. Information retrieval is constantly evolving, but there are still many unsolved problems. To improve search results, it is necessary to take into account the meaning of words in process of semantic search. The authors propose to use semantic index of concepts, metagraph knowledge base, and natural language processing pipeline for that purpose. We developed a new information retrieval system for semantic search and performed several experiments to evaluate precision, recall, and ranking. Today, we present results of this investigation. Natural language processing is often used for semantic search and includes two large areas, syntactic semantic analyzers and machine learning. Large companies use commercial information extraction projects such as Abbey Intelligent Search based on sophisticated syntactic and semantic analyzers, but they turn out to be expensive to implement. Another approach is machine learning. Since the end of 2019, Google has been using the Baird neural network in various languages, including Russian, to improve search queries. Baird is used to analyze only 10% of queries, long, colloquial, or containing prepositions. It is an improvement of the interpretation of the query itself, and not an analysis of the entire collection of documents. The use of Baird is associated with complex models and requires significant computing power. The company began to use a new cloud tensor uh, processing new, um, units for that. One of the most popular libraries for information retrieval is Lucene, which is a part of the Solar and Elasticsearch engines. Lucene is a free high performance full text search library from the Apache Foundation. It can handle complex query syntax with modifiers to specify fuzzy search wildcard quoted phrases. Also, a large number of morphological analyzers was created for Lucem. Microsoft Azure for full text search engine used cognitive search and relies heavily on the capabilities of Lucem. It is possible to use the simple query language and the Lucem extended query language. Azure cognitive search supports a wide variety of morphology analyzers for Lucem. Artificial intelligence in Azure is used to enrich indexing. It uses image and natural language processing. Therefore, we take as base Lucene library and add a natural language processing pipeline and Metagraph knowledge base. A new system was developed using Java language to study the possibilities of semantic search. That includes semantic search package, a Metagraph knowledge base package for knowledge representation, and natural language processing pipeline in analyzer package. The evaluation package has been created for comparison of Lucene Information Retrieval Library and the implemented semantic search engine. Standard analyzers and Russian morphology are used for, morphological, for morphological analysis in Lucene. The last class also implements morphological analysis in the natural languages processing pipeline for semantic search. The general schema of a proposed system presented on the slide. It includes three main steps for both document and query, natural language processing, knowledge base, and semantic index. 
Natural language processing consists of tokenization, morphological analysis, syntactic uh, context, and application of semantic rules. The key idea of our approach is a semantic index. Modern information retrieval system based on keyword search index and TFIDF metric to evaluate the relevance of results. In our semantic index, each concept corresponds to a set of documents which they mention. The search index based on concepts is based is represented uh, in the following equation for index, where the concept is associated with a set of documents IDs. To rank results using a new search index based on concepts, we introduce modified TF and IDF measures. Uh, for knowledge representation, we decided to use Metagraph model. Metagraph is a type of complex network. It has four elements, set of vertices, meta vertices, ages, and meta ages. An advantage of Metagraphs is the ability of consistently describing and detail previously added knowledge through the use of the emergence property. The RDF is characterized by a flat structure of triplets, which leads to redundancy. It also loses information about emergence that statement four and statement five are related. Emergence overcome the limitations of the flat RDF description model. We created 130 queries in 11 groups combined into two directions for our investigation. The first five groups of queries allow to evaluate the work of uh, word search without special characters. The remaining six groups are needed to evaluate specific queries using modifiers. Open Corpora dataset was used as data for the study, which includes several thousand texts uh, on various topics in several languages, including Russian and English. The standard Lucent analyzer and the Russian morphology analyzer differ from each other. Therefore, the semantic search was compared with two versions of the SAN using different analyzers. The study was conducted for text that contained words not only in Russian in order to avoid the influence of words without analysis in other languages during the study. For each request, 18 values were calculated, execution time, quantity of result, precision, recall, and two metrics for ranking. All values were averaged for each group of queries. To estimate the execution time, 100 iterations were carried out for each request and the average value was found. Semantic search results are analyzed in comparison with Lucent Russian morphology. The differences between single word queries and short queries are explained by the fact that natural language processing in semantic search cannot anomalously analyze word forms corresponding to several parts of speech or lemmas. Short queries with prepositions as well as long queries contain frequently used prepositions and conjunctions. Therefore, the same results are characterized by a large number of documents. The large number of resulting documents explain the long query execution time for the same in the case of queries with prepositions. The accuracy and recall of queries with verbs and adverbs are equal to zero because the developed system does not analyze parts of speech other than nouns and adjectives. It is proposed to solve these problems by indexing all unparsed words in addition to the semantic index. Prepositions and conjunctions can be excluded from the search as they are very often used and change the ranking of documents from meaningful words. Another variant is to add new parsing rule to handle new parts of speech and word forms. Other results are obtained for specific, specialized query types containing the same query service characters, such as quotation marks, title, and etc. Quoted phrases must uh, be mentioned in text as they appear in the query, and the semantic search index does not analyze and does not store them. Therefore, it finds erroneous results. Fuzzy search and wildcard search allow to find more documents when using the same because it parses the relevance special characters and doesn't look for exact word matches. Proximity search requires analysis of words in the text with a given distance from each other, which is not analyzed in semantic search. For these query groups, the semantic index cannot be used. It is necessary to parse uh, the query syntax and to use the Lucent index in this case. 
Grouping queries use parentheses and Boolean operators, include special characters plus and minus corresponding to logical conjunction and negation operations. Since these characters are not processed in semantic search, for these groups, it is necessary to pass the user query and build a tree for it before using the index. Despite the fact that precision of semantic search is higher than the precision of keyword search, in the developed system, we decided to use this approach another way, and it does not affect the number of documents received. This complex concept of several words, more general concept consisting of one word, are considered. Therefore, the number of semantic search documents is the same as Lucene, or it is less uh, with limitations of natural language processing. But even for queries that have the same number of documents, the order of their results changes. Levenstein distance and the metric D proposed by the authors were used to compare the result uh, ranking uh, of the two search engines. The discounted cumulative gain metric is not used since it varies values for the relevance of document obtained from some source and the considered Levenstein distance and metric D do not require them. The score for one element is one if a character needs to not be, lit, uh, to be deleted or unsorted, or div normalized to length if the element is contained in both sequences, where div is the difference in the indexes of this element in two sequences. A length is the number of unique elements in two sequences. This metric will be the same as Levenstein distance if the sequences do not contain common elements. In other cases, the Levenstein distance is less if the order of the elements in the sequences is the same, or more if this order is reversed. For the groups of short queries with prepositions and long queries, it can be seen that Lucene and Lucene Russian morphology have almost the same number of results, but the ranking estimates using the Levenstein distance and the D metric are very different. The D value is much smaller, which corresponds to the close results of two Lucene variants. This shows that it's more correct to use D metric to assess the ranking. The search carried out shows the issues of semantic search. The lack of complete natural language processing lead to limitations that can be overcome by increasing the number of parsing rules, as well as indexing words that are not parsed by a natural language processing pipeline. To process queries containing special characters, it is necessary to parse the queries as well as the use of an additional index for phrases with words, fuzzy, and other types of queries with modifiers. It was also shown that the proposed metric for ranking estimation shows better results in comparison with the Levenstein distance. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready to listen to your questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting. So yes, if anybody has any questions, you are very welcome. So uh, while other users thinking about it, I wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, for me, it's interesting uh, why you are using Java in this case, because I saw a lot of, a lot of models, methods, and tools for um, query preprocessing uh, that are using Python. Uh, yes, it is a very interesting question. Uh, so. Um... The key idea, uh, our system consisting of three main um, mod modules. And um, uh, the key goal of the system is uh, search. So um, the SAM library is uh, one of the most popular. It is very, uh, it has uh, a lot of a big uh, functionality and uh, it was chosen uh, as base for our search system. Um, and we um, extended it with NLP pipeline. Uh, we decided to use Java for, uh, in case of uh, standardization, uh, that all modules um, has uh, the same um, programming language. But um, our um, uh, future plans include uh, experiments with uh, other NLP uh, variants uh, like uh, BERT module uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Bird models are very expensive in case of resources. Um, and also, as I see, you are using uh, two languages for now, English and Russian, yes? Yes. And do you want to extend in the future to consider more languages? Uh, yes. Um, so we have um, a lot of plans in uh, our research. Some of them we already um, done. Um, so, um, um, key algorithms of our system are the same for all languages and uh, uh, open corpora data set um, has um, words not only in English and Russian but also in other languages. Uh, the key problem in uh, this case is the morphological analysis because um, different languages has uh, different grammar and um, different uh, morphological rules. So uh, it is important to analyze them. And um, some uh, statistical machine learning um, approaches like BERT or some other um, examples uh, are interesting to, um, to get another results. Um, also, uh, it is interesting to use a UD pipe uh, pipeline for syntactic analysis and for morphological analysis. It's also machine learning. Uh, so a lot of uh, plans uh, and a big work. Yes, sure. Uh, thank you for answering my questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask or write in a question, uh, write in a chat, I will ask. So, um, if nobody has any question, we can go. May I have one question? Of course, sure. Uh, what about the novelty of your work? Um, yes. Um, first of all, um, we decided to use um, modified FIDF metric not for words but for concepts. Uh, we use Metagraph knowledge base as uh, our knowledge uh, warehouse. Uh, and uh, note of this article uh, is um, evaluation of queries of ranking because uh, we do not just um, use NLP and knowledge to uh, change a number of documents, but they also change um, ranking and we try to evaluate uh, these changes. So we proposed a new metric for that and we analyzed uh, it with um, other metrics and we um, presented these results and uh, describe our recommendations for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. So we can go to uh, to the second presentation and I will ask to present uh, their work, the Ural Federal University. So we're waiting for you. Good afternoon. Do you see my screen? Yes. It's okay. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I want to tell you about system analysis and processing of parameters of the test bench. Let's start. The continuous development of software and hardware complexes of automatic control system, the complicity of reduced algorithms to ensure high reliability growing number of tasks to be solved and parameters controlled in the process of operation in the model work placed, increased requirements on the testing process at all stages of ground-based experimental development of new automatic control systems. 
The solution of the problem of conduction uh, full-fledged testing is possible only if all the necessary tools are available, as both simulation and registration equipment and automation tools. At the same time, simulation and registration equipment determine the functionality that the test stand has, while automation tools largely determine the capabilities in terms of the volume of tests per unit time. Today, there are a large number of technologies that allow automating the testing process, which in turn gives rise to the problem of choosing effective approaches to developing test stand in a tight time frame. The relevant issue is the formalization of choosing effective approaches to optimizing the testing process. In order to solve this problem, it's proposed a method for evaluation the efficiency of the test stand being developed or upgraded by comparing it with the base one. The method for evaluation the efficiency of the test stands is based on comparing the parameters of the basic development position with the parameters of the automated position being developed or upgraded, which uses various methods and technologies for optimization the development process. The method allows to evaluate the feasible of using various tools, methods, and technologies to minimize the time spent searching for errors at all stages of the test and life cycle, from design to standard operation. To increase the efficiency of the test stand, it's proposed to automate it by using CAD components testing, technologies and methods of organization on slide now. The method is based on the models of standard and automated test position. Source data and uh, for evaluation and the efficiency of the test stand is contained in the technical terms, source data and organization documents for the development of the control system and its input information. Primary information is fed to set inputs of the standard and automated working position models here. Reference information is provided in the model for organizing calculations of parameters of the test position. Periodic updating of reference information allows to keep your methodology up to date over time. Reference information. At the output of the models, the same sets of position parameters with different quantitative values are formed. They are sent to the input of the efficiency calculation model, which is in accordance with the target function, calculates the efficiency coefficient of the projected position relative of the reference one. Model evaluation of the efficiency. Parameters of the standards and automated test stand are determined by the formulas 1 and 2, where vector A is the input information vector, vector P is the used technologies, and vector C is the reference information, function F type and F auto, models of typical and automated development positions. Efficiency coefficient of the development position relative to the standard one. And Determine, uh, determine, is determined by the formula 3, where vector W, M and P auto and W, M and P type uh, are vectors of weakly dependent parameters of the automated and typical test stands. Vector P R is a vector of weight coefficients, priorities, allows you to set optimization criteria. Vectors of weakly dependent parameters of the automated and standard test stand are determined by the formula 4 and 5, where MNP is matrix of sele for, for selected weakly dependent parameters. Vectors of weakly dependent parameters contains uh, four parameters on the slide. Efficiency coefficient of the development position relative to the standard one Determined, is determined by the formulas by the formula seven. Objective function to the calculation of the efficiency test stand 
uh, determined by the formula 8. Uh, the time limit for optimization of the structure of a test stand. Uh, here, limit is development time and time create of the stand. Function for calculation the efficiency coefficient of a test stand relative to a standard one, where an MNT mean the number of weakly dependent parameters that need to be minimized, and an MNT max number of weakly dependent parameters to maximize them, and function k MNP mean and k MNP max the value of the weight coefficients for the corresponding weakly dependent parameters. Weight coefficients of function for calculate the efficiency coefficient of the test stands uh, is determined by the formula 12, where function PR and PX priority value for a single weakly dependent parameter and M and P one weakly dependent parameter. Uh, function for calculating the efficiency coefficient of a test standard relative to a standard one uh, in full variant uh, is determined by the formula th 13. The software system for calculating the efficiency of the test stand is developed on the basis of the proposed method for evaluation the efficiency of the test stand. Program language is Python. The software has the following function: uh, function calculation of parameters automated and standard test stand based on the specific input and reference information and selected optimization technologies. Calculation of the efficiency coefficient of the optimized stand relative to the standard one of the selected set of optimization tools. Determination of the optimal set of test bench optimization tools for the specific conditions, time of stance launch, and number of specialists. Calculation of the development time of technological equipment for an optimized test stand with a specific number of specialists. And setting priorities for optimization of the test bench when calculation in the efficiency coefficient of the test bench relative to the standard one. In conclusion, the proposed method for evaluation the efficiency of the test bench allows to evaluate the feasibility and ability of using various tools, methods, and technologies to minimize the time of error detection at all stages of the life cycle, from the design to standard operation. The developed method can be applied to test stands of control systems for various purposes, and uh, in particular to control systems for strategic and space purposes. Thank you for your attention, and I am ready to answer for your question. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask. And I will uh, now ask you one question. Um, you implement your software, uh, how can I say, within the whole infrastructure that you're working on. For example, you have uh, a bigger project for which this software is needed, or it's just a separate software? Uh, in the in, the, in my work uh, was developed a methodology of uh, calculation the efficiency of the test stand and uh, developed software for uh, realization of this method. Thank you. So if we don't have any questions? Uh, we are ready to start with the third presentation from. Where is the question? Oh, okay. I see the question in the chat. Uh, the question is: Do you implement the method of test bench on real object? Uh, yes, this method is 
used for the stand uh, control system uh, of rocket uh, for rocket uh, spacecraft uh, in the Yekaterinburg. Thank you. So uh, if we answered Konstantin's question, so we are now ready to go to the third presentation from the Tumen State University. Please, you are very welcome. Yes. Andrei, please, can you stop sharing your screen? Thank you. Yes, so we are waiting for Tumen State uh, University. So are we here? Hmm. I see that nobody is here from the Tumen State University, so we can go uh, for their uh, fourth presentation. It is mine. Yes, it is about um, process name categorization. So, I think you can see my screen. Uh, today I will tell you about categorization of process names. My name is Zemira Halmatova. I am from Annapolis University. Uh, Nowadays, the biggest software repositories are hosting thousands of different software systems. And with the growth of software products, it's important still uh, have the ability to categorize them, to differentiate given applications and complex software systems, uh, since this categorization can be very useful in a variety of uh, tasks. For example, finding the software, we can group similar software uh, systems in one category to make them easily found. Uh, finding CPU utilization objectives, we can understand which category consumes more energy. Uh, also, we can, uh, with the help of categorization, informing developers about related software systems. For example, developers uh, can learn best practices. And of course, the last uh, reason is software maintenance. Developers could recognize what problems or bugs uh, of applications from the same category can appear. Also, categorization can help to understand user preferences, improve personalized services. In our case, we're more interested in the investigation of, of the time uh, spent in each category by different users. To do uh, this, we need to be able to categorize the processes that were executed. In the past, the categories were assigned manually, but now uh, with a huge amount of uh, applications available, it's impossible to do. Uh, and um, so we are start our proposed approach with data collection. We propose a method for categorization of processes executed during the user's interaction with the computer. It's based on finding the longest matching subsequence of two elements, the process name and the element from the list of applications with categories. So we have two sets of data. Uh, applications with predefined categories and process uh, names for which we need to define a category. The difference between application name and process name is that the process names uh, have extensions like .exe or the path to the executable file. Uh, the first set of data is the set of applications uh, for, uh, with which we will find the similarity of a given process. Uh, since there are a lot of sources containing application names with categories, we decided at first to construct a mapping from process names to applications and then for each application define the category. 
So the second set is the project names themselves. So based uh, on work of other people, sorry, uh, we defined uh, the most popular categories and uh, categories that we will use in our work. We will use seven categories, utilities, uh, entertainment, development, communication, management, education, and design and creativity. Um, and each of these categories, we filled with the names of applications taken with the help of so, uh, SourceForge. And overall, we have uh, 125,000 uh, names, uh, application names in both open source and commercial music. So we wanted to create a simple method, which will take a process name as an input and give the category as an output. The challenging thing in this approach is how to measure the similarity between two strings. The application name can have more symbols uh, that the process uh, name itself and vice versa. Also the process name could be an abbreviation of an application name. So we need the solution which uh, can capture this information. Uh, we can see the scheme of our method uh, in this slide. It takes a process name from um, in a metric system. It's big systems that uh, capture information about uh, users activities. After that, the process name is going to be preprocessed. At this stage, all the extensions or path to the executable file uh, will be removed. Then we will calculate the similarity between clear process name and application from the list. Uh, and the application with the highest value will be chosen as a ground truth and its category will be assigned to the given process name. And during the evaluation of our method, we set the threshold. If the ratio of similarity is less than 0.5, we consider our process name as uncategorized. Uh, these un uncategorized processes we will consider separately since it could be an executable file of operating system and terrier process. Also in our experiments, we didn't classify the browser since the category strongly depends on the uh, on the information that are searched or viewed uh, with the help of it. So um, for our approach, we have different process names and uh, our proposed approach can correctly assign the category for 81% of given process names. Uh, and you see about 14% uh, our method labeled as uncategorized. In this case, we had some names for which it's difficult. For example, the, it is abbreviation from an application name or it's executable file of operating system interior process. And in these cases, it's really difficult or almost impossible to find a suitable application. And finally, only about 5% uh, were classified incorrectly. So uh, the ability to categorize applications in our own way encourage us to move ahead in this direction and we want to use this categorization approach to understand the time spent for each category by a computer user. After it, we also want to extend our classifiers so we could classify not only process names but also the browser titles uh, based on the same categories. Uh, also, we, we would be most happy to share the data that we have collected with, our, uh, with other researchers in the same field for a comprehensive progress of this discipline. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. So if there is no questions, we can finish this section. Thank you.
thank presenters for their great presentations. Uh, it was really nice and very interesting. Thank you very much again. And we'll see yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Zamira, for facilitating this section. And uh, here we come to the end of the first day of uh, our conference. So thank to all of you for participating today. And uh, let's uh, meet tomorrow at 12, 12 p.m. So see you next time. Thank you and goodbye to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.